Z-Sonic, the heart of your system. I'm Leo Walter for Kit Guru here with Silverstone of Computex 2019. We've got a number of cases on this stand to see and some power supplies. The one directly behind me is interesting. This is the Farah V1, is how I'm reading that. I hope I'm correct. And when I first saw it, I thought Colink. It's got a kind of glazed in front panel. I thought, how does that breathe? And I looked again and realized it's metal mesh. There's a filter directly behind it, but that is all mesh. That's breathing. Three 120 fans by the look of it. It's got a full system built inside. Loads of RGB inside, tempered glass window and all the rest of it. That's all good. But my initial impression, incorrect. I'm liking the look of that. And that's a regular mid-tower 80 x chassis, which is probably around 80 quid. And we've got Gamers Nexus sneaking into shot. In fact, I'm going to grab Steve. Steve, come here. Come round, Steve. Come round. Join us. That was hilarious. That was just like... <laughs> How's it going, Leo? Absolutely fine, Steve. So... <laughs> The best hairdo of Computex 2019 goes to. Steve, just tell us what you've enjoyed so far of the show and at Silverstone. Uh, Silverstone, the alt is pretty cool. Like it's a return to the uh, like the high performance approach for Silverstone, and it's got some some glass and some RGB LEDs, which I'm not sure how I feel about that. But if it opens up the market a bit more to Silverstone, that's a good thing. The show, uh, I guess AM4 kind of wins this, or X570 wins for coverage, as you, you well know. Discussion we were having, uh, if we're going to jump to AM4, which seems a bit rude at Silverstone, what the heck. Uh, 16 phases, 8 phases doubled, all that good stuff, your build side thing. Uh, is the world moving? Because you've, you've actually been breaking open that whole conversation in the past year and a half. You've done amazing work there and Buildzoid. Buildzoid's so, done a lot of it, yeah. He's, he's responsible for the, the technical side of it, for sure. Um, yeah, so I think the like Asus had a whole conversation for us about their their twin eight whatever they marketed it at uh, originally, you know. Uh, so that's like, I guess transient response is a big focus for them, which is kind of interesting. We're still trying to catch up and learn about like why they're making the design decisions they are. And then uh, MSI, as we were talking about using like the the quadrupler mixed in with the doublers. It was a bit confusing at first, but I mean, Buildzoid figured it out immediately, obviously. Um, so yeah, the good news is it looks like everyone's prepping for 16 core, which does exist. Uh, and the, you heard it here for, I actually haven't shared this yet. Uh, AMD accidentally confirmed it to us because they were talking about a, um, and they said, you know, it's amazing this platform started with a, a quad core and now we've quadrupled it to 12 cores, <laughs> which isn't how math works. Uh, so anyway, I heard it here first. I didn't share that on my channel yet. That's a Leo exclusive. <laughs> Excellent. Are you a member of the Intel is uh, on its knees, it's dying, they've had a bad time? Because I mean, so many people have gone totally for the hyperbole. So your considered gamers nexus take uh, on Intel 2019-2020? Uh, I think they are not dying. Like Intel's what, like a $200 billion market cap? They're fine. Um, Intel needs to do something in, in the mainstream DT and enthusiast desktop for sure. But uh, HEDT, they still have some unique advantages like memory latency is advantaged over Threadripper. Um, and then on the, I mean, like on the desktop side, i7 for sure, i5, those are in trouble. But um, uh, be beyond that, I think like they're not going to go away in the next two years. It's just going to take them a long time to respond properly, I think. Officially, Intel not dead. And finally, the fact that NVIDIA at this show seems to have basically nothing, but then on the other hand, they're dominating gaming graphics. So again, people are saying, oh, what have they got? But on the other hand, why would they react? So let's stretch it forward. Let's look three months up the road. Navi, excited, not excited, RTX 2070 level. Again, the distilled version. So I would like to see AMD release a flagship sometime in the past 10 years. <laughs> like, uh, so sooner is better. Uh, I guess to be fair, they had like 390X is pretty competitive at one point. But um, yeah, no, it's like Navi's looking, obviously we'll need to test it. I can't make any firm like opinions on it because I haven't touched it or even tested it yet. But uh, it's good to see that they are targeting some 2070 level performance. That's a popular market. I don't know how the pricing will be. Uh, we've heard rumors. Sapphire had some. I've heard those might not be accurate. Uh, but yeah, I, NVIDIA absolutely needs more competition. Like for sure, the way NVIDIA has been behaving with media. So I would like to see AMD do something to put some pressure on them. Uh, 
I am not convinced yet that Navi is it, but that'll depend on you know how the performance looks when it comes out. So you can't come to a firm opinion about Navi because it doesn't yet exist. Right. Lumen amateurs, it's, eh? it's actually all a myth uh, created by the Illuminati. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Absolutely. <laughs>